Hello folks, I'm Ellie Little. This is your weekly TA wrap. Well, we take a look at these markets, we do it from a neoclassical perspective and ask ourselves what happened last week. What does it tell us about the coming one? I do a show once a week, every Sunday night, live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time here on the base of the Rocky Mountains. So, um, what did we have last week? Holiday shortened week, really not much that you can tell, you know, from the kind of trading that you had because there was no volume. And so when you have no volume, you really have to go on the existence of the trend and you have to look for any kind of clues of anything that might be happening uh, irrespective of that volume. And what I mean by that is how the markets are actually acting. So if we pull up the charts, and I want to pop in here on the daily chart, and what I want to focus on is what was happening with respect to the daily chart. And in particular, you know, if we look at what was going on Monday, you know, push up, you sell off towards the end of the day and there's your push up and here's your sell down right actually I've got it uh, excuse me Monday was here it actually was up up you know sideways and then the push down this was Tuesday Tuesday was up and then again you push down towards the end of the day the point of this is that each day you come up and they sell it down at the end of the day there was a little bounce here on that one and then we got the nice big spike up on the day after Thanksgiving but lo and behold by the end of the day same thing they sell it off so you can see sell-offs here on three of the four days last week that's not what we've been seeing up until now we saw it again on Sunday saw it saw it in a large I mean, excuse me on Friday saw it in a large way um, and that to me says you know this market's struggling and if you take and look at it from the daily perspective you can see the struggle you can see it here we're on the S&P you can see it here is this index just keeps working across you really can't get any kind of movement higher on the S&P and as a matter of fact you can't even hardly see it moving when you look at it here on the weekly stretched yes it's stretched again that push has been higher has been uh, without much of a pullback there was an ABC remember we've been talking about three or two ABCD targets in particular this one it takes it up to about 1850 I think it was 1859 and then there's also the nested ones that are within it. For example, there's one here that's taking place. This one was targeting just slightly higher than it has gotten. Those targets are still in place. They're still working towards them on the S&P. Now on the Dow, it's actually been stronger than what we've seen on the S&P. Uh, if we pop over and look at it, you'll see the same sort of setup, although this one has been finding a way to climb higher um, Friday got a nice push up and then again just like the S&P sold off but you can see here a nice big strong straight up move on the weekly chart and now you have these dojis up there these are failures you know going up at new highs and sell them off now it was on a shortened week a shortened day and with no volume so I don't really want to try to discount it but at the same time I don't want to put too much weight on it what's really been happening is the listed issues if you remember they were the ones taking us up over the last couple of months well since then this past week it's been all about Google and Apple and that's the NASDAQ that's the NDX the NDX very different picture than what we just looked at on the S&P big strong straight move up it's broke over highs and it's getting the push as a result of that now again no volume as a result of the holidays in the year we only have four more weeks roughly to go trading wise 
That means you really have about two weeks of real trading and then you go back into the slow grind type move that's probably going to take place the last couple weeks. Uh, so the next you know, 10 days of trading really is the rest of the trading for the year. Other than that, it's going to be a push and just probably some sort of a grind. And given the trend, right, I mean, the trend is clearly, you know, all these lows, if you look at them, that pretty much tells you the trend. Trend is up, fixing up print and I want here before we know it. Uh, that trend up is in place and continuing. The problem is when you get these extended moves and the ABCD targets come into play and most of these targets are getting close again. We saw that one on the uh, uh, the, the uh, S&P 500. If you look at the one that's here on the NDX, you can draw one from there. That one's pretty much complete. Uh, you could also draw a shorter one inside that. Then you have the larger one that's outside of that because we have nested ones. Uh, the larger one outside is for higher prices, but usually the nested ones will get you up, you get some sort of a retrace, and then you continue on to try to eventually get to the target you're after, and that's that's what these things are doing. End of year run, probably going to still happen. Susceptible to a pullback, any place, any point right now. Uh, NASDAQ composite, uh, the wider versus the NDX looks about the same, not quite as strong. Uh, the Russell, on the other hand, has finished off ABCD structures and that one looks to be struggling to me. So index wise, there still is nothing here other than some slight signs telling us that you've got to expect you're going to get some sort of a pullback in here somewhere. Do you try to play that pullback? Not really, unless you're really nifty with your trading. Um, it's probably worth just sitting it out and letting it come back and then letting it charge ahead again until the end of the year because that's what it's going to try to do. So I don't think that you should be making any kind of uh, big decisions here over the next couple uh, days or even this week. You've got a lot of earnings, uh, I mean not earnings, but economic news that's coming out in particular you have the um, situation with flash PMIs that come out at the beginning of the month. We already got the Chinese number. It was a little bit higher than expect expected uh, on their flash PMI. You're going to get PMIs tonight in Europe. Uh, a few more um, tomorrow we'll have ours. We also have GDP numbers coming out this week. We have an employment number at the end of the week. There's a bunch of numbers this week. The economics are probably going to come back to the fold this week and kind of define and dictate how this market wants to trade. But as I was suggesting at the beginning here, I do expect some sort of a pullback in here somewhere. And so um, if you want to try to prepare for that, you can. I suspect it's probably going to be very deep, so you're going to have to be pretty nifty if you're trying to trade it. If we look at the sectors and uh, see what they're doing, I've been writing a piece. Uh, I was spending some of the day today on this, uh, looking at um, what has been happening with this market from a sector standpoint. IYT over the highs, uh, it got over them on uh, the prior day, that was uh, Wednesday. Uh, you, you test over it, back under it, a little bit more volume on Friday, on Friday, shortened day, which is kind of interesting given how short the day was. But again, stretch, 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 susceptible to a pullback, sure, it can happen anytime. The semiconductors, they, they have been the ones that have struggled the most. Now most sectors have been up there and been working higher. The semis, on the other hand, um, you know, they're doing they're doing this sideways move at the top. That's on the weekly. You can see that same range is right in here on the on the daily. What has happened though is it's pushed multiple swing point lows now in a row. And if in fact you do get some sort of sell off that comes down and starts breaking these guys that's going to lead to a faster push even deeper so you have to you know you have to keep an eye on this now on the flip side of that you've actually got the same setup because it's a range you've got the same setup on the flip side in other words these are all swing point highs 
So you've got to believe when this happens, what usually takes place is a bunch of stops set up above that market. And if it takes them out, it can get a push higher, a nice two to three bar push on that time frame. And so in this particular case, there's more risk to the downside than there is the up if it does break down versus up. But either way, coming out of this range is probably going to have a pretty nice move. XLB doing nothing, just sitting at the tops now, range trading at the tops. Um, this thing is pretty extended at this point, and I would I would be quite surprised if it doesn't try to pull back here pretty soon. Uh, XLE, and, that, and I'm looking at it from the uh, MTTF point of view when I say that on the daily. Uh, the XLE, uh, when I look at it, it actually has the same sort of setup. It's not nearly as extended though, but this one's been struggling more than others. The thing that we have noticed before and continue to notice is that with the XLE, uh, you have a situation here with the highs that it's trying to break, the lows that are down here, the range that's created, right? That situation is there. And what I don't like about it is that most of the bars that show volume are bars to the downside. So you got big bars here, there, and also back over here. So I, I don't like the way that one has set up. It's not nearly as strong as the others. XLF has been very strong, but the last couple of days, uh, this one too has been struggling and is starting to set up some sort of an attempt to do a range as well. Now it has an ABCD structure inside of it that hasn't been completed. It had two, remember it had, uh, you know, on the daily here, it had one that completed up to here, which simply set up another one, and now it looks to me like it's going to try to set up one more. That target on the large ABCD structure is from there back down and back up, which takes you about to that same spot. So you can see that range, which is about 20, uh, is up there. Another pullback, right? Maybe some sort of a push back to this area, get you another setup to push up and finish off the ABC structures. Now, the one that had already done that, uh, which we talked about, and we said that we probably would see some sort of sideways action now, while others tried to finish it off, is the XLV. And the XLV is doing exactly what you thought, or what we thought it would do. And that is, is that now that it's finished off its ABCD structures, which it has, right? Now measure to about there, it finished it off. It also finished off a little nested ABCD structure inside. So you had two of them finish off in the same area. And what does it do? It works down. So we'll see. My guess is that this thing is going to continue to work sideways up here while the rest of the market tries to finish off ABCD structures on the upside. XLY, uh, this is the consumer discretionary with Christmas coming up. Uh, there's a lot of belief that uh, you know this uh, particular sector is going to be able to push higher. And let's take a look at it. Okay, maybe we will. Hello. All right, here we go. So there's the push up, and what I'm what I'm seeing is what I expected we're going to see up here, and I'm I'm expecting that you're going to see this thing go sideways. I you've already finished off, you know, ABCD structures inside here, back and forth, right? Multiple times needs another little pullback to get another one up. To, try to finish off the biggest one that's still out there. So you can see all these guys are doing the same thing. Nothing's wrong with them. They're all just doing what they're supposed to and that is, is they're taking their time as they work their way higher. Let's go over and look at the, uh, I'm not going to look at any more of these. They're all about the same to me. XLI looks the same. Let's go look at the ox markets because we did have some movement in uh, the currencies last week. Let's start with the dollar. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so on the dollar, the dollar pushes down. Now this is good. So it comes in and it finally tests. 
at low was 2167, got underneath it, closes over it, got less volume. On the weekly, not as clean. So the problem here on the dollar is that on the weekly, you know, there's a retest regen on this bar. The bar we're looking at is here. That retest, you went into it, didn't have as much volume, right, on the, on the first push into it. Now you're getting a retrace off of that. On the daily, you held here, which is good. You still have this zone, so you really kind of have a zone right in here that it's, it's uh, testing into. And then the real, the real test is going to be is what happens now. In other words, you tested here, you failed to work lower. You know, will it, will it get the bounce and set up some sort of a larger ABCD structure to take it higher, right? This sort of a action, right? To take it back up to this area, or is it gonna, is it gonna break down? Now, when I look at it, it looks to me, and again, I, I, it's hard to measure when you don't have much of a week, but it looks to me like the ABCD structure is going to try to work higher. We'll probably know that tomorrow. Let's look at the FXE and see if it's the same story because it's the largest weighting. And why do I look at this? Because, because all of your commodities are based on it. If the dollar works lower, typically the commodities work higher. The commodities themselves have been struggling no matter what the dollar's doing. Um, yeah, so that was a failure again on Friday. So the FXE, yeah, there's just nothing stopping it yet, though. The, the, the price point it's trying to get to is 135. It's only trading at 134. So I could move another 60, 70 cents to get up into this that zone. So that one's up in the air. But if you look at gold, for example, you can see the FXE traveling higher. Gold, however, can't get any kind of move. Gold is trying to get back into a retest regen off the latest breakdown. And if you look at it on the daily, that's this area. On the weekly, it actually is a different story in that it's trying to get here to the lows. So now that it's broken down, Here's your weekly breakdown. It broke down here, got its bounce, and now it's back underneath that low. That's only a break on one time frame, but there is some volume down here at this low on the weekly. So if gold does get back up here and cannot get over it, in other words, can't break the retest regen, then the regenerate is going to regenerate lower. And again, like we always do, is we draw the ABCD structures, and you can see how that would get it down into this area, which probably puts it right at that low. And that would be the big test, right? Because on the weekly, then you have ABCD structures down on the weekly. And actually, they're not that far. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it here to see what it looks like. There was a little nested one here. No, that actually was, that was all the way down to here. So the, the ABCD structure here really only gets it to about that area. So that would be a finish off on two time frames of ABCD structures, which actually might set up the big buy. So gold may get interesting yet. Yeah. Let's see what silver looks like. I think it's still weaker, or at least it has been. I had somebody email me and ask me about silver, so let's just tackle that while we're here. And the question was actually a broader question, what do I think it's going to do next year? not just short term. So to, to answer that, of course, is going to require us to look at uh, something more than just this time frame or these time frames. So let me pull out the monthly chart and see what that one looks like. Okay, so silver on a monthly. All right, so the last place of congestion. Let's figure out where that is. It looks to me like this was the key area. And that's where, of course, it tested into. That's where the support zone sets up. The bottom of that, or the top of that, is 1888 down to 
1647. 313, 249, 296. So, all right, so this hit, this hit into the support zone on the monthly with increased volume. So the bar that hit in there was the June bar, the June month, month of June. That volume on it in this area was was greater than this area over here in particular these bars. That tells me that it probably is going to try to test it again. If it were to break it, it would be a huge ABCD structure on this time frame. And that structure is from yeah, it's from this high. Oops, let's get the right tool. Let's try that again. So it'd be from this high to the bounce, which is here, and then on down about an equal weighting, which takes you deep, very deep. And that price point is 12. And we're trading at 19. That's another 40%, 30%. So that will be that will be serious if it happens. Now let's go see if I believe that. Okay, so if it's gonna happen, it's gonna take time. And the reason for that is just like we saw in gold, you've got another projection that takes you about to there, which happens to be just about where that swing point low is and the volume there is fairly large. So to break it, if we continue straight down, to break it, it's going to be hard. Now if it were to set up some sort of a bounce, right, even that is going to do the same thing, take you to the same spot. So you would have nested ABCDs that probably bring you there. The retest regen is back up here on the daily, And it's into this bar. So yeah, it looks to me like we're going to get a bounce here, just like it looks like in gold. Some sort of a bounce here that sets up an ABCD structure on the daily. And on the daily, it looks like this one, right? Which would take you about to the same area. So it looks to me that what's going to happen is you're going to see more pressure into the end of the year, beginning in next year. And then that's going to be, that's going to be the real story is does it break? Or does it hold? If it holds, then people are going to start talking about double bottoms and all that business. You know, when they talk about classical TA, uh, for me, what it will be is, okay, what kind of volume do you hit it with? And, you know, do you hit it with volume or not? If you don't, if their sellers are unwilling to step up and sell more at lower and lower prices, then you're probably going to flip this thing around and go the other way. Let me see what copper looks like. I'm curious what the other metals look like. Copper is a mess. You know, the interesting thing about this is even though it it looks horrible, just like we've seen in other charts, you've got nice volume spikes to the upside on the weekly. And that tells me that this is still a range trade and that what it's trying to do is come back up here and test the top of this range and potentially break out of it. So copper to me does not look bad. I, I don't see a, you know, even though the chart looks terrible, it doesn't look bad. Let me go look at some of the other commodities. Uh, let's look at oil. And actually somebody's asking about oil as well as I type. So let's see what oil looks like. So on the weekly, Well, that's really interesting. So, oil tried to bounce and couldn't get anything going, right? If we look at it first, let's look at the daily. So, you had a swing point low here that you finally broke. You broke it on a gap down that actually gave a, uh, a kind of gave a buy signal the way it closed, right? You know, when, when you get a hammer like that, 
and it says it doesn't want to break and then it closed back over that swing point low again that's bullish that on a short-term basis that's bullish that low is 33.45 yeah close at 33.46 one penny over the low so this this at worst to me appears to be a range trade in this range still which means you have to expect it's going to try to test the top of the range again in particular it's going to come after this bar this swing point high again which would put it up into this area that will be the big test on oil now if we use that and come back over here to look at it I'm just trying to see is where's the retest region is way up here this is fascinating because <laughs> you know it's, it's I, I try not to read too much in the charts but this tells me that all can trade all the way back up to here that would be a heck of a move that price point is 36 and a quarter which would bring you all the way back up to do a retest regen because the only you know after you get past this low the next low is up here and it never got the retest regenerate I believe what you're going to find is that oil is going to trade in this range it's going to refuse to break lower and then you're going to see it at some point break back out and actually make the trek all the way back up here and that's probably going to be the failure that's certainly going to be the retest region up there and that uh, that's probably not what anybody's expecting and if you're a classical guy what you would be looking at is what what folks would call this would be some sort of a head and shoulders right if this plays out over time you know, you would have your you know your left shoulder here, or, you know, a head up there, some sort of a right shoulder on this side, potentially for a bigger break to the downside eventually. But right now, that does look like it's going to work its way higher before it's over with. Fascinating. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, how about UNG? I haven't looked at it in a while, and I'm running out of time. So let me end with this one. Wow, what a move! Remember this came out, this, this, this was one of the most interesting ones because this is how bottoms happen and why they're so hard to trade, right? Because if you remember, this traded down forever, right? And then it started setting up a range. Well, it came down, blew out these bottoms here, right? Came up, tried and tested towards it again, and now it's getting the push. And you can see how big the push is. It's still a big range trade, but still, this is putting in a bottom. Even with all the natural gas out there, you're still putting in a bottom. All right. Okay, folks, so so what does all this tell us? Um, you know, to wrap this up in some sort of a package uh, as we leave it here tonight. You know, what it tells me is this market's still bullish. It's still bullish into the end of the year. Can we get a retrace? Yeah. Will we get a retrace? More than likely. Is it something you can play? Probably not, unless you're really quick, right? Unless you're really, you know, if you're, unless you're really working it. It's going to be hard. So given that, you know, the best thing to do is just sit. Sit, wait, stay with it. Because, because this market wants to try to run into the end of the year. you got a huge bullish year. Do you really think they're going to sell it off hard in the, the year? It's going to be very hard. Uh, I, for one, wouldn't be wanting to short sell this thing, and I doubt anybody that has stock wants to sell what they have. So you just don't have the natural sellers out there to take it lower. Yeah, you can get a little pullback, but they're going to buy it, more than likely. I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you being there. You tell a friend, tell two. You know, if you want to check out our service, and I try not to... Uh, to do too much of this but you know in terms of advertisement but you know I do have to make money and uh, if you refer a friend you can be a, a member of the site or not if you want to get at the services and earn dollars 
you can earn up to three months free. All you got to do is refer a friend if they check it out and they want to try it out. You can earn money for yourself for the services. Have them for nothing. It's better than paying, I guess. Thanks a lot. Have a great night. I will see you tomorrow. We'll see how this new week shapes up. Uh, it should be interesting. And, uh, um, you know, look for higher prices. That's the way it looks to me. Until next time, take care. I'm L.A. Little. This is and was your weekly T.A. wrap. Have a great one. Good night.